Hi there, everybody. Sorry about the delay on that. We're excited to introduce our next presentation by Brainbox AI. Brainbox AI is an AI startup that is redefining energy management in the built environment. Their revolutionary technology has already enabled energy savings of 25 to 35 percent for buildings of various size and purposes. I'm excited to introduce jean Simon Venn, Chief Technology Officer and co-founder founder of Brainbox AI. Jean, uh, jean Simon has over 25 years of experience in the fields of technologies, biotechnologies, energy efficiency, specializing in fast and efficient migration of technology, innovation to commercial applications. All right, feel free to start sharing your screen and get things started. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just uh, grab my screen. I want to make sure everybody see it. Uh, can confirm that. Uh, everybody... Looks great. Yep, looks great. All right. Well, good morning or afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you uh, today. Um, so I will um, give you an overview of the technology that we built uh, over the last three years uh, around uh, smart building using AI. Um, and let me start first why, why we, we worked on, on this technology and put some context around uh, uh, the fundamental around this technology. Um, the situation on the planet is quite fascinating. Uh, a bit scary, but fascinating. We're, we're more and more people. We'll, we'll reach 10 billion people by 2060. Um, and most of these people have the tendency to go live in cities. Um, and the, the, this this trend is actually accelerating quite rapidly right now. So of course, to respond to this, we're building more and more building uh, in high density population area. Uh, and actually that number of building will double uh, by 2060, which is um, great if you're in the business of building buildings, um, not so great in if you're in the business to finding the power, the energy to uh, feed all these new building on top of the existing building. Um, and then we could have an entire discussion about the climate change. Uh, if in your neck of the hood, it's going to be more the water, which is rising, or if it's more about the fact that it's becoming drier, hotter, uh, or if simply we see more uh, violent uh, weather event, uh, uh, which are becoming more violent uh, every year. So. In any case, it's um, creating problem for the building stock, it's creating problem for the population, and we're heading into an unsustainability situation quite rapidly. So what can we do about it? Um, and what can we do in a very massive way that will have an impact quick enough, fast enough, so we could have an impact on these huge trends? So what that's basically what, what we worked on is that we need to develop a technology using intelligence, artificial intelligence, that will be able to have a significant impact. So our existing beta user are generating in between 20 and 40 percent a reduction in carbon footprint uh, by their building. And that's for us an important number. Um, most of our beta users, though, are more interested about saving money uh, than saving the planet. So we're also delivering uh, an interesting, interesting saving and between 25 to 35 percent energy savings, um, only working on the HVAC side. So we're, we're not playing with lights. We're not playing about um, should we have less elevator or reduce the elevator time. We're only working on the HVAC, the thermodynamic equation of the building. So eating and cooling of the building. So to, to have an impact of 25 to 35% on the entire energy bill of the building, we need to have a huge impact on the HVAC side of it, which is usually between half to 70% of the energy consumption of a building. So we're really cutting that segment in half. And that's uh, what we're doing. So, so why, why are we working on commercial building? Well, when you look at the, the way the energy is being spent on our planet, it's about 28% on transportation, 31% on industrial side, and 41% on the building stock. And, and of course, that will decline in different type of buildings. But when you look at the transportation side and you look at what the uh, aerospace industry have been doing uh, for the last 15 years, they manage to produce now, design and produce planes which are consuming a lot less energy than they used to be. 
um, really doing their part. And they're facing a similar situation as there is more and more plane in the sky year by year. So if they don't do something about it, well, they will have an issue about how much energy they will need to fuel all these planes. Um, but you look at the vehicle, the light duty vehicle, their typical car, and you see game changing innovation. Um, look at Tesla, but also look at all of the ride sharing um, model uh, that, that we saw with Uber and Lyft. And these models are all revolving around a, an interesting concept that uh, when we buy a car, that car stay parked for about 94% of the time. Um, we only use it for 6% of the time in a given day. So this is kind of a waste of, uh, of, of asset when you think about it. So uh, sharing rides kind of lower that 94% number quite significantly. Actually, a lot of studies show that if we were to do uh, on a massive scale ride, ride shar sharing, um, we would basically reduce uh, the number of cars on the road by more than half, having a huge impact uh, as long as it's done quickly. Um, when you look at the residential sector and the building energy consumption segment, um, there's all, already a lot of initiative and, and it's all started with NAS, but you look at the solar panel, especially what's going on in California, uh, California, it's 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 quite amazing. You uh, there's so many solar panel now on roof of, of the houses that it's actually creating too much energy for the grid at certain time during the day. Um, uh, but when you look at the HVAC uh, for commercial building, um, that's still an empty space, and there is a lot of commercial building. It's about equivalent to the residential stock. Um, but we need to have something hosted in that square. And that's exactly where we go and where we want to be fitting. And the problem on the commercial side of building is, is triggered with the fact that very often the building are not commissioned properly. They, they're commissioned to a certain stage, but they're not optimized. And then the building evolves and nobody's really doing continuous commissioning or, or recommissioning on a regular basis. Um, and then the tenant change and the nature of the activity change and, and, and the building is not uh, configured at the optimal position. Uh, on top of the, the, the control sequence, the programmation that's uh, embedded in all of the HVAC control systems uh, is a fixed program. Uh, designed to fit a typical day um, with a typical behavior of users. And this situation is very often not fitting what you're seeing outside. So uh, you might have in one given month a typical day in terms of weather, uh, but most of the time you're not on the typical day and you are uh, spending too much energy uh, to fit the building into that typical day, which is not what you're seeing outside. Um, a lot of initiative are done right now in commercial building to improve the building energy efficiency, but they are time consuming uh, and very costly. So you want to re replace an existing boiler with a more efficient one. It's a, it's a fairly interesting big project in terms of construction and it, it will cost and you a, a lot of capital to invest. And you're looking at paybacks, which are like three, four, five years. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's a barrier which is, uh, which is slowing down a lot of initiative. So to make a, a significant impact, we, we kind of list what we need to assemble together to, to make it fit, to make it a success. Um, we need uh, to reduce the energy consumption uh, by a large number. Um, the solution needs to be scalable, scalable quite rapidly. Uh, without having any uh, adverse impact on the existing operation and having uh, no impact at the implementation time. We need, if possible, to remove all human intervention um, so we could, we could scale faster. Um, no upfront costs or very, very little upfront costs, otherwise people will know, not buy it. Um, and the, the, the financial rewarding need to be huge. Uh, very little people do it only because it's green. So green alone will not cut it. Um, so our premises that we put together is we, we, we want to deliver 
uh, very low upfront cost uh, with a payback less than three months and sometimes it's even less than one month. Uh, we want to have something which is super fast to install, half a day, uh, and we want our AI to, to be learning quickly about the building. So you don't want to have like an AI which is going to take two, three years to learn your building and start to do something productive. You want to do it like within a month and a half. Um, so how does it work? Uh, the technology is, is, is designed to, to be installed in a box, uh, about 12 inch by 12 inch box, that goes sit on top of the existing HVAC system. Um, it, uh, it needs to interface with all of the different type of HVAC controller and there's about 700 different communication protocol in the HVAC world in our, in our planet. So it needs to be able to interface with these different type. It needs to be able to extract the data uh, and also talk to the controller so it could work with it. Um, so the second step is we, we start to extract the data for about four to six weeks. So the AI engine could learn the specifics of the building. It could understand what is different in this building versus the building on the other side of the street? And how is this building interacting with the weather pattern that it's seeing on any given day? And once these correlation are done, the AI kind of understand exactly how this building is operating and what's gonna happen if the situation start to change in a different uh, sets of weather parameters. And at that point, the AI is using a a, a team of algorithm which are modulating the building in real time. So it could optimize the different settings, save energy, but also make sure that comfort issue are resolved quickly and people are more comfortable in the building. And it's at that point that you start to see the savings, which are around 25 to 35%. And as the AI continuous journey, it will keep improving as it discover new behavior, so change of tenant, tenant changing their behavior, or new uh, weather pattern that are being identified, the AI will keep understanding it and study it and adapting to it. One of the key principle that we're applying is we're using AI to be able to predict what's going to be happening in the next two to three hour in any given room in the building. So at any given time, the building is being analyzed and we are identifying that in 90 minutes, let's say in a conference room, the temperature will arise at two more degree and it will be too hot. Um, so before even the trends start to happen in that conference room, the AI is giving us that vision of the future of what's going to be happening. And at that point, we at this time, in the present time, we change some of the settings to make a very small adjustment and we're canceling out that undesired future that we identify thanks to the AI. And at that point, we recalculate the future to make sure that the new future is bright and the desired one. Doing so, we're basically consuming less uh, kilowatt in this situation than if we were waiting to the trend to happen and then the thermostat to react to a situation which is becoming uncomfortable. So the thermostat will fix the situation, but it will do it at a higher number of kilowatt than if you do it at a preemptive. And that's one of the key principles we're applying, room per room, floor per floor, building per building. So I already spoke with the different algorithm we have. We're playing at a different area on a different equipment of the systems. Um, and all this is done uh, in a teamwork. And the teamwork is very important because we need to maintain the thermal equilibrium concept. And I'm not going to dive into that slide too deeply, but basically the building is leaking energy, you know, through the window, to the sewer, to the uh, infiltration of the isolation of the building. So we're leaking energy, thermal energy. So in a, tam and in a winter time, we're leak leaking uh, hot hair or hot water. In, a win in the summertime, we are leaking cold air through the building. And we need to compensate it if we want to maintain the desired temperature at any given time. That's what we call the thermal equilibrium concept. And to maintain that, we need to buy energy or find energy. So if it's sunny, as the example on this slide, you have a solar gain. 
In the winter, this is perfect. It's helping us to heat up the building. In the summer, it's something we don't want because it's, we, it's basically eating up the building and we want to cool it down. So it, it is an influx of energy that it desire or not. And we need to maintain that equilibrium at any given time at the optimal level. And that keeps changing by the hour. And that's why it's making it quite difficult to do if you're just doing it by hand with a small calculator. And the AI is especially good in these situations as it keeps calculating everything and preemptively changing that balance at the right position. As an example, um, we uh, also are playing on the peak shaving. So you want to stage all of your production of your hot hair or cold hair or cold water or hot water. Uh, so you're not creating super peaks on your utility bill at any given month. So the staging at the right time of these equipment need to be done at the same time you need to make sure that you're maintaining your desired temperature at any place in the building. And that's not a small equation if when you're doing this real time. And once again, that's a perfect situation for AI. So we didn't develop this uh, alone. We developed this uh, with the help of a lot of partners. So the uh, US Department of Energy is, is one of our key research partners, especially the NREL, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory uh, near Denver in Colorado, but also uh, IVADO, which is uh, the AI cluster uh, in Montreal, uh, Canada, uh, ATS, which is a university, uh, uh, in Montreal, but also uh, Microsoft, which is working with us on, on the cloud side, uh, telecommunication like Comcast and Bell Canada are helping us on all of the communication in between the building and the cloud, and a bunch of other uh, research partner which are uh, giving us their tool, working with us so we could embed the, their technology into this AI environment. So a couple uh, case study just before we, we wrap up and we go in question. Uh, period. Um, so we've been running a, a beta program uh, for the last two years uh, in around 20 different buildings. Um, and we try to deploy the technology in different type of building, office building, hotel, uh, retail chain, uh, warehouse, uh, college campus. So we could, we could see how the AI is performing in different settings. Um, so, so far, a couple of examples, uh, office building, uh, that's a building downtown Montreal, uh, about 17 story, not, not about, it's 17 floor. Um, energy saving so far is averaging out around 24%. There was a lot of comfort issue in that building before we deployed the uh, technology. Uh, we, we figured that it's, it's hard to calculate because it's so intangible about occupant comfort that we figured out that we saved, uh, we reduced that number of in comfort of uh, hot spot and cold spot as we call them by about half. Uh, hotel, which is an hotel uh, uh, that uh, is uh, being run on the suburb of Montreal um, that hotel is uh, averaging out the 26% savings and a retail chain, uh, which is a national uh, retail chain. And we deployed the technology in uh, uh, three of the, the different uh, uh, locations. And as you see, the, uh, the savings are averaging out between 28 and 31%. Uh, uh, and there was also an interesting reduction of service call that was, uh, that was observed in these, uh, in these retail uh, locations. And um, I would be ready for question. Great, thanks so much. We do have one um, coming in. Um, folks, if you've got a question, you can either use the chat or the Q&A feature um, to type those questions to us. Our first question is, what do you offer for optimizing new construction rather than optimizing existing buildings? That's an excellent question. Um, so the, the big issue with uh, new construction is you don't have the before. So you cannot benchmark yourself about are we doing better than before. So uh, in this case, in, in the first place where we saw that was in that retail chain, which is opening new stores. And they said we would like to deploy it in a new store. Um, uh, then we just deployed the technology uh, at that point. We don't have any before. So basically the technology was uh, observing, as you remember that, 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 that month and a half of data gathering 
uh, that's where the AI is uh, when the store opens. The, the AI will study the behavior of that store, which is a new store. So it will have to understand how that new store ticks. But, but pretty much everybody is doing the same in the commissioning. Um, and as soon as you, uh, you do that uh, six week, the AI is now understanding how that store is behaving in different situations and will start to operate it. So you, um, you, you run from that point on. I think that's all for questions. Uh, last call for questions. Oh, here we go. We've got one. Um, how do you predict conference room usage and therefore the projected cooling needs? Does the system link to a booking system? No, we, we don't. Uh, it's, that's a very interesting question. So we, um, we will use in public spaces like the retail, hotel, uh, all of the public spaces, uh, Google popular time, we'll, we'll, we could we basically buy that information from Google. It give us the, uh, the uh, approximation of the, how much people are in that room at any given time. Um, and they do that, of course, with our phones. Um, so, but when it's a private space, like an office space, they, they, I'm not sure if they're basically capturing that data or not, but they're not selling it. So we, we don't have access to that. So then we only, the AI, the only way it has to deal with it is to find the behavior. and and. And once it's a new behavior starting, it will identify something is happening by looking at the trend. So as people are walking into a conference room, the eatings will start to basically, will, the influx of people um, will start to show uh, on the return air temperature. So usually people are emitting in between uh, 100 and 200 kilowatt of uh, heat per hour. So, so basically, as let's say 20 person walk into a room, you will start to see that influx of hot hair coming back in your return duct, and the AI will, uh, will start to understand that if we don't do anything right now quickly, um, in 20 minutes, the temperature will start to rise in that uh, conference room, uh, and you will be in a reactive mode. So it will, it will probably do a preemptive strikes, understanding that we're starting to have uh, each signature of a meeting and will identify that as a as a new meeting starting most of the time though human are predictable so the AI will have a will have a figure out that uh, Monday morning eight o'clock there's always a meeting of about that many people uh, and the Tuesday night there's always something happening in the conference room uh, at that time um, it's uh, it will cover pretty much 80 percent of the different uh, meeting which are quite predictable well, thank you so much, John Simon and Brainbox AI. We really appreciate you guys um, in this presentation. Really interesting stuff. Um, so, give us a second as we get uh, as we start.